This video is intended only as an overview to support the installations of Fisher and Paykel dishwashers. It should not be relied on in isolation. Read and refer to the installation guide for all safety warnings. To install Fisher and Paykel dishwasher safely, you will need to read the installation guide and check that you have everything you need. Take note of all safety guidelines and warnings. Be aware of all hazards that could lead to electric shock and injury. Exercise caution. Please also follow your local authority's compliance regulations. Units must be installed by a qualified installer or a Fisher & Pico trained and supported service technician to avoid any faulty electrical connection and water leaks. Appliance failure due to improper installation is not covered under the appliance warranty. Be careful when unpacking to prevent damage to the surface of your appliance. After making sure that there is no damage to the outer box of the unit, cut the straps and lift the top of the box off. This will expose the unit. Check the cabinetry dimensions including width, depth, height, floor level, and finished alcove returns. Refer back to the installation guide to confirm all dimensions and specifications. Gently tilt the unit so the cart can be slipped under from the side between the appliance and the polystyrene form. Finally, make sure that the floor is protected and that there is a clear path before pushing the cart to the installation location. To install the infill bracket, push a small screwdriver downward through the screw hole from the top of the appliance to remove the plastic plug. The infill bracket is installed as a cosmetic feature to fill in the empty space visible for cabinets with a cavity height of 35.5 inches or above. It is not needed for cabinets that meet the ADA standard of 34 inches or below. To install the infill bracket itself, remove the two screws pre-installed from the infill bracket place on top of the dishwasher. Use the same screws to attach the bracket to the top of the appliance. Do not tighten fully. If needed, to fill in the side gaps between the appliance and the cabinetry, there are side wings available. Align the side wings, slide the side wings of the bracket outward to cover the hollow space, and then hand tighten the two screws. First, we're going to affix the slider bracket to the panel through the lower pilot holes. We're going to tighten those down. Our first of the upper two screws is going to be placed again through the pilot holes, but we are going to leave a gap of about three millimeters between the head of the screw and the panel itself. We are going to repeat this step on the opposite side of the door panel. Remove the D3 fixed handle screws on the inside of the door panel area. There is one screw on each side. Using these screws, secure the door pins to the outer door panel. The door pins may need to be held with an adjustable crescent while securing, but be careful not to scratch the door. Repeat for each side of the handle. To hang the door panel, close the door of the dishwasher and align the screws of the accessory panel into the lower keyhole of the dishwasher door. We're going to slide the custom panel, or in this case again, the ADA door panel, so that the top of the door panel is flush with the control panel. The panel can only slide upwards and can be lifted off and reinstalled if required. Checking to make sure that the door panel is properly installed and is nice and flush with the control panel. We are then going to remove four screws, two on each side of the door. We open the door and remove the four screws and replace with the 3.9 by 1 and 1 half or 38 millimeter screws to fix the door panel into place. Again, two of these on each side. Final step, we are going to check the door balance of the unit. 
In some cases, it may be easier to disengage the door so it stays flat. If you did do this step, install the door springs so that there is tension on the door. Check the door balance by opening and closing the door. If the door drops when released, increase the tension. If the door rises when released, decrease tension. Ensure the appliance is leveled for proper dish rack and wash performance and door operation. To do so, remove the toe kick and mounting plate. To access this area, remove the four screws holding the toe kick and mounting plate together. Set screws aside for reinstallation. To level the unit, adjust the height of the legs. Adjust the rear foot via the back leg adjustment pin using an Allen key. The front feet can be adjusted by using an adjustable wrench. Make sure to align the appliance within the cabinetry. Ensure the top of the door is aligned flush with the surrounding cabinetry. Use floor protection before sliding the appliance into the cabinetry. As you push the appliance in, pull through all the hoses and cord to ensure that they do not get kinked or twisted. To connect the power, remove the junction box cover. Unclip and remove the junction box cover to access the appliance electronics. Connect the wires, making sure to install a strain relief into the junction box bracket and secure the house wiring or the power cord and tighten. Thread the wires through the hole in the junction box bracket and connect the incoming ground to green, white to white, and black to black. Refit the junction cover box. To ensure no wires are pinched beneath the cover, ensure the power cord is routed underneath the appliance. Ensure the power cord and connections comply with the National Electric Code Section 422 and or any local codes and ordinances. Maximum power cord length is 6 feet. Be sure to flush the water line into the bucket before connecting the water inlet valve. Connect the 90 degree elbow to the water inlet valve. Ensure the rubber gasket is placed between the threads of the elbow and the water supply valve itself. Do not over tighten the elbow. Ensure the end of the elbow is pointing to the rear of the dishwasher. If using a flexible braided hose, screw the nut of the hose to the thread of the elbow, tighten with an adjustable wrench. If using a copper pipe, slide the compression nut and ferrule towards the end of the pipe. Insert the end of the pipe into the elbow and screw the compression nut to the thread of the elbow. Ensure that drain connection complies with local plumbing regulations. Screw drain hose support to back wall at correct height. If space is limited, such as in this case, for fixing the drain support, push hose through drain hose support to required height. Ensure that the drain hose is installed as close to the underside of the bench top as possible. This will ensure no waste re-enters the drain hose in the event of poor flow or a blockage in the plumbing. Ensure that the drain hose does not extend into water retained into the trap. An air gap is required to prevent wastewater from siphoning back into the tub. Then affix the drain hose to the drain tube or garbage disposal Secure with the connection clamp, making it tight, but do not over tighten. This unit has two ways to secure the appliance. Way number one, fix the product to the adjacent cabinetry. Ensure the brackets are flushed with the cabinetry. Cut off any excess portion of the brackets. Using the two four by 25 millimeter screws Secure the product to the adjacent cabinetry through the brackets located on each side of the product chassis. The second installation is to affix the appliance to the bench top above. Using two 4 by 25 millimeter screws, secure the appliance to the bench top above through the brackets located at the top of the appliance chassis. Important, this installation method is not applicable if an infill bracket has been installed. 
Final mounting procedures. Refitting the toe kick mounting plate and panel. Refit the toe kick plate and mounting panel that was removed earlier. If desired, a custom continuous toe kick panel can be installed. Check to make sure your door overhang and swing range are not affected by the toe kick panels. Door overhang and swing range is relative to the height and depth of the toe kick panel. Cut back excess panel to ensure continuous seamless integration. If using a custom toe kick or continuous toe kick panel, align and prepare continuous toe kick panel, making sure to mark out the point in which the toe kick meets the base of the door panel. Cut back access. Fit continuous toe kick panel to the surrounding cabinetry. Mounting the door handle. Using a 2 mm Allen wrench, loosen the set screws on the underside of the door handle. Slide the door handle onto the mounting posts and then retighten with the 2 mm Allen wrench until firmly snug. Do not over tighten. <laughs>